All right. In this example, we're going to take a look at how we can use our OptiView to capture some packets and then drill into those packets and look at a specific TCP conversation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and hit Capture. And I'm going to hit Default so that it's going to capture all the packets. I'll hit Start Capture. And yes, I want to overwrite the capture buffer. And we see that we've got some packets. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, generate a little traffic here. We'll go out to the Washington State Department of Transportation website and uh, we will see what our Seattle traffic looks like this morning. And this will give us some TCP conversations going across there. So we see that uh, things look pretty normal southbound. Uh, on 405 is chugged up to a point where you can probably walk across the cars. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close that window. Now we've captured over a thousand frames. So we're going to hit stop capture. Then we're going to hit view capture so we can take a look at the packets that we captured. And so since we already had uh, protocol expert up and running, it brought that right up. If we didn't have it running, this is where we would type in our user ID of SU and our password of manager. So now uh, our overview screen is going to show us our specific conversations that we have. But what we're going to do in this case is jump straight over to capture view. And I'm going to turn off this bounce chart over here on the side. But what we're going to do is we're just going to come down here and we're going to find a TCP conversation. And just we can grab any TCP packet. In this case, we're grabbing this one where we're uh, getting this Seattle Portland Bicycle Classic JPEG. And I'm going to right click on that. Now from here, we can do uh, a number of different things. But what we're interested in doing in this case is a follow TCP stream. When we click on follow TCP stream, what this does is this takes and assembles all of the TCP data contained in the packets between those the IP addresses and the port numbers that were associated with that packet we selected. So in this case, we can see uh, you know, what we're passing to the website. We can see what the website's passing back to us. Uh, if we wanted to, we could save this information. We can view this information in EPSIDEC or HEX, uh, depending on you know what it is that we want to do with this data. If we're using a mainframe, we could take a look at it in EPSIDEC, or in most cases, ASCII is going to work pretty good. So now we can go ahead and close this. And what we find is that now we have just those packets associated with this TCP conversation. So from here, we can tell a lot of important things, such as up here at the top, we have our TCP SINs. We can see that we send out a TCP SIN to www.wsdot.wa.gov. And what we get back is a TCP SIN acknowledgment. It took us 204 milliseconds. So that would give us an idea of what the round trip delay is for this connection. We then send our HTTP GET we see it takes 275 milliseconds to get a response to that get. Now normally, we'd think that that was pretty long, except in this case, our round trip time just to set up the connection was 204. We then start receiving data back, and we then can uh, either choose to close the connection, or like in this case, we send some more gets. Now we can go one step further here, and since we have a lapse time turned on, we can hit F2, and if we didn't have a lapse time turned on, we could check that. But what we're going to do is reset our lapse time set mark option to zero. And when I do that, it zeroes out that time. So that allows me to come in and see that if at zero is when we establish that TCP connection, and we come down here, and we did our get, and we find out that we got our data back, it took 1.5 seconds to set up that TCP connection and get the data back for that first get that we did. So we can use the elapsed time option as a way to measure how long it took to do certain things. So in this case, it took 1.5 seconds to pull back this main web page right here. And we can tell it's the main web page because we're not requesting a specific object. So if we ever want to go in and find out how long a specific thing took to do, this is one of the ways we can do it, and we can focus in on a specific TCP conversation
by right-clicking and doing that follow TCP stream. So we'll go ahead and close this up. So again, this is how we can capture some traffic with our OptiView, and we can drill into a specific TCP conversation with that.